Peace and gratitude, family, and welcome to another episode here on Cosmic Cell Foods, where we focus on entrepreneurship, health, and spiritual evolution. In today's video, we're going to be talking about insulin production and regulation. How is insulin produced? What is insulin? Is insulin the only enzyme that's being secreted by the pancreas to help with glucose uptake? We're also going to talk about what's needed to be able to thoroughly repair the pancreas if there is any situation going on. We're going to teach you exactly what to feed the pancreas and why. We'll also be talking about the biochemical process that an enzyme has to go through before it can even be secreted by a gland. So stay tuned because I guarantee the information in this video you have not heard before. And at the end of the video, best believe it, we're giving away a prize for a pancreas therapy. The therapy that we use to effectively remove waste from the pancreas, feed the pancreas with the minerals that are associated with it, as well as electrify the cells with the energy that they need throughout this process. So it has the energy to ignite the active sites within the blood cells to give you energy. And this is how we effectively increase pancreas health. So if you would be interested in that, I suggest you watch the video all the way through. So now let's get into it. All right, family, so let's get into it. What is insulin? Insulin is secreted by the pancreas in response to high blood level glucose and stimulates glucose intake in the liver, adipose tissues, and muscle tissues. Number two. How is insulin processed? The enzyme of insulin is created and produced by going through the endoplasmic reticulum, then moving through the Golgi system, then it's secreted through the secretory vessels. Insulin is produced as a 110 amino acid precursor called preproinsulin. It is translated at the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. And as it's pulled through the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, the N-terminal sequence that directs this precursor to the secretory pathways is cleaved off. The result is the accumulation of pro-insulin inside the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. The intramolecular disulfide bonds that take place on the endoplasmic reticulum link together the N and C terminal regions of pro-insulin. The pro-insulin is then transported to the Golgi system and from the Golgi system to the secretory vessels. Inside the secretory vessels, insulin is subjected to proteolytic cleavage. This cleavage results in the production of active insulin, which are formed by the N and terminal region disulfide bonds. But remember, it was subject to proteolytic cleavage. So therefore, insulin is formed by two chains, the region that connects the N and C terminal fragments, as well as the cleavage that was formed inside of the proteolytic process inside of the secretory vessels. And this single peptide chain is called the C-peptide. And both mature insulin as well as the C-peptide are secreted by the pancreatic cells. So now, how is insulin used in the liver, adipose tissues, and muscle tissue? Let's hop in and I'll show you. All right, family, now that we know how insulin is created and produced, now let's go on to see how they are utilized within the white blood cells and the red blood cells, because this is how they have their function within the liver, adipose tissues, and muscle tissue through the red and white blood cells. So let's get into it. So for the longest time, the C-peptide, which we went over, was considered necessary for the proper folding of pro-insulin and insulin, as we previously went over. And it was considered as an inactive byproduct of insulin processing once it was released. Recent study shows that the C-peptide has, in fact, many important physiological roles. So for example, the C-peptide and mature insulin have opposing actions on the red blood cells. The red blood cells have an enzyme called PDE3 that converts ATP into AMP. When PDE3 is inactivated, excess ATP is released by the red blood cells and triggers in the endothelial cells the activation of NOS, which is an enzyme responsible for the production of nitric oxide. The release of nitric oxide results in vasodilation, and that simply means the widening of blood vessels. The binding of insulin to its receptor on the red blood cells activates the PDE3, while the binding of the C-peptide to its red blood cell receptor inhibits PDE3. Therefore, together, insulin and the C-peptide adjust the amount of ATP released by red blood cells to control the release of nitric oxide. But we can already begin to understand that if your pancreas isn't producing insulin properly, this means that your red blood cells already off rip are either overproducing ATP or underproducing ATP. If you aren't producing insulin, that means you aren't secreting the C-peptide as well as mature insulin. So this means that this is why we start to have sugar issues within the blood because the insulin and the C-peptides that was normally being secreted from the pancreas 
isn't being secreted due to all the waste that's in the inner core of the pancreas, which will go over how to clean the pancreas out. This also means that the nitric oxide, which widens blood vessels, isn't being activated properly either. And all of this is necessary for the blood cells to one release waste as well as to absorb the nutrients that is needed. Because if we have vasculoconstriction, this means that those blood cells aren't going to be able to take in the active sites that they need they're not going to be able to take in the iron that they need basically because the insulin that's needed within the blood isn't being secreted by the pancreas and this is why they have to put you on the insulin shots because if you don't have insulin going to your blood system this means your blood sugar can drop this is why they have to put you on those shots but we're going to give you the example of exactly what you need to do to be able to do this the natural way so therefore together insulin and the c peptide adjust the amount of atp released by the blood cells to control the release of nitric oxide and vasodilation. Very important, family. Very important. All right, family. So in other cases, both insulin and the C-peptide have inhibitory effects. When white blood cells are activated, they release cytokines that trigger the upregulation of adhesion molecules at the surface of the endothelial cells. This is basically waste removal. So cytokines is what allows the upregulation of this waste to be removed from the surface of the endothelial cells, but it gets deeper. The first attachment of white blood cells to these adhesion molecules is one of the first steps in extravasation, the infiltration of the inflamed tissues by white blood cells. So this goes into showing you how white blood cells begin to remove that waste and acidity from the cells, from the endothelial cells. So when both insulin and the C-peptides bind to their respective receptors at the surface, as you can see right here, the C-peptide as well as insulin, and over here on the red blood cells, the C-peptide as well as insulin, they're needed in both cases. So if the pancreas is not producing the C-peptide and the insulin, neither the red blood cells or the white blood cells will be able to communicate properly and they also use these receptors to communicate with each other, as I'll get into here in a second. When both insulin and C-peptides bind to their respective receptors at the surface of white blood cells, a signaling cascade is activated and leads to a decrease in the release of cytokines and thus prevents tissue infiltration by the white blood cells. Therefore, the C-peptides have anti-inflammatory properties. Insulin also helps the red and white blood cells communicate with each other. So what is this saying? The decrease in the release of cytokines by insulin. Insulin is what makes the cytokine release stronger or weaker, decrease or increase. It's the insulin that's doing this. And this cytokine release is what allows the waste to be removed from the cells. So this is why I say red blood cells and white blood cells communicate through insulin by way of insulin. Because if this insulin isn't produced properly, these cytokines are just gonna be released uncontrollably when these white blood cells come out. So this is what a lot of people are going through when they are dealing with out of control diseases like cancer, because the white blood cells are the lymphatic cells that come and eat away waste and come and bring the cytokines to release and uproot the waste removal, the adhesion, inflammation from the cells. We can see that if this isn't controlled, these white blood cells can easily damage red blood cells. They can easily infiltrate the tissue of the white blood cells and damage the red blood cells. So we have to understand that the way that they are, that white blood cells and red blood cells are communicating is through, it's through insulin. And the C-peptide is what provides the anti-inflammatory properties for this cascade. So we can understand if there's no insulin, there's no proper communication between the white blood cells and the red blood cells. If the insulin isn't in place, the white blood cells cannot communicate with the red blood cells. The red blood cells cannot communicate with the white blood cells to tell the white blood cells, hey, stay out of my tissue. I'm fine, there's no waste on me. Go over here to one of the buddies down the path. He got a little waste around him. He got some acidity from the acidic foods over around him, but I'm good, don't mess with me. Then the white blood cell slows down the release of cytokines when it's around its red blood cells and pushes it off and you know it moves throughout those red blood cells and go somewhere else where it's needed. And those cytokines are being released the whole time the the body is so intelligent family so i just wanted y'all to be able to understand this from a deeper level of what is going on in your body so family we can understand that the c peptide regulates the tuning of insulin 
signaling. So now let's go over into another example of what the body goes through when there is low insulin and high insulin. So now let's see what happens when the insulin level is low. So the binding of the C peptide to the membrane receptor leads to the activation of one type of G protein and the stimulation of an intracellular signaling pathway that mimics insulin signaling. Therefore, insulin signaling is enhanced by the C peptide when the insulin level is low. Now, what happens when the level of insulin is high in the system? When the C-peptide binds to its receptor, a different G-protein is activated. This switch of G-protein leads to the activation of PKC, which in turn represses the insulin signaling pathway. Therefore, at a high concentration of insulin, the C-peptide dampens the insulin signaling pathway. So the C-peptide is an extremely important aspect to not only the red blood cells, but also the white blood cells as well. And whether the insulin is low in the body or high in the body, it will be the C-peptide that will bring everything back to balance, that will create the activation of the G protein that mimics insulin signaling. Therefore, the red or white blood cell can still operate effectively. So the C-peptide is extremely important in this process. Not many people even know what a C-peptide is when it comes to <laughs> insulin regulation. All right. So just as a quick summary, protein processing is an important way to regulate protein activity. Some proteins are stored as a precursor in an inactive form. And then when it's necessary, specific proteases cleave and activate the precursor. It allows the cells to accumulate a high concentration of inactive proteins, thus reducing the potential of cell toxicity and to quickly process and release large amounts of the active form of the protein when needed. So this is the process of insulin in the system, how it's used in adipose tissues, muscle tissues, as well as in the red and white blood cells. So now that we know how insulin is used, in the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and insulin regulation in those cells. Now we can talk about the therapy that's needed to take care of any pancreatic issue that may be going on. So we know that there's 102 plus minerals in the body and when just one of those minerals are absent, we are susceptible to disease. So the mineral that's associated with the pancreas is chromium. That's the mineral that's associated with the pancreas. So once we go through our three-step process of cleansing out that waste, because that's the first step, we got to break down the waste that's in the eyelid of Langer Halls, which is the inner core of the pancreas. Once we cleanse that inner core of the pancreas of waste and debris, so the second step will be flushing that waste out of the body that we've broken down. So once everything is broken down, we flush all of that waste out of the system. Now the body and the cells can receive nourishment. Now that we've depleted the cells of the waste as well, as minerals because as we're cleansing the body of waste we're also removing minerals from the system those minerals also have to be replaced so we energize the body because the body will be weak as you're removing that waste from the system as well because we're removing minerals and minerals is what provides us with energy and electricity so we provide the body with iron because iron is the one magnetic mineral it energizes the entire system then simultaneously we have to replace those minerals that were depleted so we do that through providing the body with all 102 plus minerals that the body consists of so now once you have this three-step process implemented properly now we can feed the pancreas what it needs it needs the chromium in abundance so we remove the waste we flushed it out of the system we energize the body so it has energy again and we've provided the body with all 102 plus minerals that the cells need now we're focusing on nourishing the pancreas with the specific mineral that it needs. So we've nourished the entire body. Now we're focusing on providing the extra nourishment to the pancreas that it needs. And this is how you remove any pancreatic issues, family. This four step process, I guarantee if you do it using alkaline plants that contain these specific minerals that we went over today, you can come out on top when it comes to insulin production because insulin is produced and secreted from the inner core of the pancreas. So if there's waste and corrosion, insulin is not being created like it needs to. So that's why you end up having to inject yourself with the insulin shots. This is teaching you how to avoid having to go that route. And you can do it by not even getting to that point, by keeping the system healthy. All right, but if you've already reached that point, this is a good guide for you to use to be able to get to where you want to go. So in conclusion, I hope this video has given you some valuable information on the production and creation of insulin, as well as how to provide the pancreas with the nourishment that it needs so it continues to operate properly. And until the next video, Cosmic Cell Foods, we out. If you enjoyed this video, it's a probable guarantee that you're gonna like this one as well. So go ahead and give it a gander. And remember to keep it cosmic.